You're about to watch a comprehension toolkit lesson, a shared reading lesson, in a fourth grade classroom. So today we're going to talk about, um, our listening target will be, how do I keep track of my thinking when I'm reading? Okay, because we know that reading is thinking. Thumbs up if you've heard that before, reading is thinking. Great. So this will be nice and easy. So I'm going to pay attention. When I keep track of my reading, I need to write those things down. All right. So I'm going to be reading with my pen and I'll show you how that works. So here, oops, I got to put the marker down to move the thing down. So our title is called Bug Bites. And actually the first thing I'm wondering about when I hear bug bites is, is this going to be about all my itchy, scratchy bug bites? So really bug bites? Hmm, I, I'm wondering if that's not a tricky title, that they're going to make me think about something else. Because I remember we were talking about that in writer's workshop, about making my, off, my reader think a little bit. So I'm wondering what that bug bites really means. All right, so here we go. Go on. You guys. Oh! Try that again. Okay. Oh, and I lost my nose. Okay. So to those of us who have never crunched a cricket or slurped a worm, gross. The idea of eating bugs sounds pretty gross. Isn't that what I just said? That it was gross. Yes. Ew. Okay. Turn and talk to somebody next to you with your pyramid partner. What am I doing right now? What did you notice? Okay, five, four, three, two, one, pyramids up. I heard you say that I was taking notes of what I was thinking about. Okay, put your pyramids down. Right on, guys. Your thinking is matching mine. Okay, I am making sure that I remember what I'm reading because this article, see if I'm doing and I'm thinking right now, I'm going to go back to the old school way. I'm thinking no way. I think it would take a lot of convincing for me to want to eat a bug. Okay, here we go. Eat up. We're outnumbered. <laughs> the old, you know, you're going to be my buddy and you're going to put those up on the chart, okay? All right. Eating bugs is an old habit. 10,000 years ago, before they learned to farm, our ancestors found food by hunting and gathering. Now, I remember hearing that before, hunting and gathering, but I thought hunting and gathering meant like berries, berries and maybe grains, something like that they'd find to eat. All right, so that's what I'm thinking about hunting and gathering. Bugs were considered part of the daily diet. So I'm going to put on here bugs. Okay. It made sense for ancient people to eat a source of nutrition that was right under their noses or buzzing by their ears. As you've probably noticed, bugs are everywhere. One out of every three animals is a bug. A sci and scientists estimate that there are 200 million of the little creatures for every person on the planet. Turn and talk about what you're thinking about right now. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, pyramids up. All right, see if your thinking matches mine. You can put your pyramids down. That's a lot of bugs. 200 million is a lot of bugs. But, so I'm going to write lots 
of bugs. And I'm going to write under here really quickly 200 million so I can remember that for later. All right. No wonder more than half of the people on earth still, still eat bugs daily. I've got lots of notes going on here. Still. Okay. I might give those ancient people a break because, you know, there wasn't the grocery store to go to, right? You had to eat what you had to eat. But still? Really? Okay. Of the million or so types of bug that scientists have named so far, more than 1,500 are somebody's favorite snack. The most popular bugs to eat are crickets and termites, which are said to ta taste a bit like pineapple. Hmm. Turn and talk. What do you think? All right, five, four, three, two, one, pyramids up. All right, lots of excited buzzing there. So yeah, I think you guys were thinking what I was thinking. Really? Pineapple? That's surprising. Okay, my turn. But lots of other bugs are edible too. Restaurants in Mexico sell ant tacos. Cans of baby bees line supermarket shelves in Japan. In Thailand, outdoor markets offer silkworm larvae. We know that larvae means caterpillars, right? And in Mozambique, in Eastern Africa, people call grasshoppers flying shrimp. Now, you know what I'm thinking now? I'm wondering, is there anything we eat that someone else in another country might be thinking, you eat that? So I'm wondering, I wonder if there's anything that we eat that's a little bit weird. Turn and talk. <clears throat> okay, five, four, three, two, one, pyramids up. Pyramids up. All right. So if we keep going, it says, whoopsie. Fun fact, moviegoers in Cambodia eat roasted ants instead of popcorn. So to answer my question before, I'm wondering if people in Cam Colombia, I said Cambodia, didn't I? Colombia, I wonder if they think eating popcorn is a little bit weird. Hmm, it's all what we're used to, isn't it? So let's go back to our listening target because today I wanted you to think about how do I keep track of my thinking? And we actually had a couple different ways going. So turn and talk. How do I keep track of my thinking? Go. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Pyramids up. Turn to a different pyramid group next to you and tell them what you told them. Scoot in, girls. Share with someone. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Everybody's pyramid up. There you go. Nice job, guys. All right. So, check your thinking. What did your group say? Why, how do I keep track of my thinking? Well, you find things that you may think are interesting. Okay. So she said two important things. She said things that I found interesting and things that I was wondering about, and I wrote them down. Did somebody say something different? Yeah. She's, you're using your ideas in the text. Oh, my ideas with the text. And what did I do with my ideas in the you text? Wrote it on a post note and you combine them both together. Okay. So I put some ideas from the text, and I put my ideas, and I wrote them on a post it note, and I put them up here. Now, before. <laughs> when the smart board, when I thought I knew what I was doing, I wrote it right on the text, didn't I? Now, sometimes we can do that if it's an article, like a little worksheet that you're working on, okay? And we, something that we can throw away, we can write on. Can we do that if we've got a book? No. no. So it's good to have both ways. 
Sometimes we can write right on our papers and sometimes we need post-it notes when we're using books or texts that aren't our own, aren't we? All right, guys, tomorrow we're going to talk about um, why it's important to do that. Okay, so just to give you an idea of what's coming up, tomorrow we'll talk about the why part. You did a great job thinking about the how. Tomorrow we'll talk about the why. Okay, all right, fourth graders. Yesterday we talked about how to keep track of our thinking. And we talked about how we put it on post-it notes when we couldn't write in our text if we have a book that we have because we can't write in our books, right? But sometimes we can write on our text if we have a piece of paper or something else that we're going to throw away, okay? Today we're going to have a chance to write on something. We're going to actually use the article that we have here, okay? So we're going to keep thinking about keeping track of our thinking but today, our listening target is why. I know how to do it, but why am I doing this? So as we're reading today and we're thinking about our reading, I also want you to be thinking about why we're doing what we're doing. Okay, so I need your pyramids up for just a second. Okay, and I'm going to give one article to each group. So you're going to work together. Nope, we're just going to use pencils, okay? All right, so here you go. Yep. There you go. There you go. Can you pass one to the group behind you? And I think everybody should have one now, right? So I have the text up here. You have the text in front of you. And today we're going to keep track of our thinking right on our paper so you can write right on there. So let's get started. The title of our article today is called Penguins in Motion. Now yesterday we talked about how we wrote down things that were interesting, things that we were wondering about, anything that that little voice in our head started saying while we were reading. Okay? So here we go. Let's get started. Penguins live only in the southern hemisphere in places like Antarctica and the Galapagos Islands. All right, my head is already thinking, well, it's cold in the north, like by the North Pole. It's certainly cold up northern Canada. I wonder why there aren't any penguins up there. So I'm going to write that on my post-it note. If you have something you're thinking about or that your partner is thinking about, write it down. Mm -hmm. Or right on your paper. I have post-it notes. Okay. Oh. <laughs> She's my post-it helper today. All right. So, turn and talk. What are you thinking about? Just in that first little part. Anything you were thinking about? Thumbs up if you had a thought. Thumbs up if your thought was like mine. Okay, let's keep reading. Are we all going to have the same thoughts and wonder the same things? No. Nope. Nope. All right. So they live in the southern hemisphere. They are birds, but they cannot fly. That doesn't mean they don't get around. Okay. If you have any thoughts, any interesting ahas or oh wows, go ahead and write those down. All right. I already knew that they couldn't fly, and I knew that they were pretty good at getting around because I've seen that. Oh, I could write that down. I've seen them move at the new exhibit at the Minnesota Zoo. So I'm just going to write Minnesota Zoo to help me remember that that's what I was thinking about. Okay, let's keep going. Waddling on land. To walk, penguins waddle across the ice, bobbing left and right, inching their way forward. Their webbed feet loop out to the side with each step. They use the little flaps on the sides to help steady themselves. They can go a little faster if they flop down on their bellies and slide along the ice and snow. And my reaction to that is just a smiley face. 
because when I've been at the Minnesota Zoo and I've seen them flop down on their bellies and slide, it kind of makes me laugh a little bit. Okay, turn and talk to your partner. Anything you're thinking about in those two places. Or if you've seen it on a video or maybe, maybe it made you think of Happy Feet. Okay. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Pyramids up. Eyes up here. Okay. Who can share some of their thinking right now? What were you guys thinking about? Okay. Why do they waddle? Okay. Who has a different thought? Why yep. Face. Why? <laughs> Makes you chuckle when you think about them sliding on their bellies. Okay, so back to our listening target. Not ready to answer yet, but just be thinking, why am I doing this? Hmm, okay, keep that in mind. Why am I doing this? All right, zipping through the water. Penguins look clumsy on land, but it's a different story when they're in water. When swimming, they have more amazing moves than an Olympic gymnast. But a ping, put a penguin in the water and let the action begin. Turn and talk. What are you thinking? Okay, what are you thinking about, buddy? I see one writing and one not doing anything. Okay, what are your thoughts? What are you thinking about? Nothing at all. Nothing. Nothing even wow? Yeah. Or that's cool? Yeah. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Pyramids up. Who wants to share some of their thinking right now? Okay, let's hear it. Penguins are good swimmers. They are. That's what they told us, right? In the back. They're really fast. Slow on land, fast on water. Last one. Why are they better than humans, like the gymnast? Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep reading and see if we answer some of those questions. They zip around the icy Antarctic water like torpedoes with tuxedos on. The little wing flaps and the webbing between their toes help move them through the water at high speeds. Penguins have been clocked as fast as 27 miles per hour. Turn and talk. What are you thinking? Five, four, three, two, one. Pyramids up. I wrote down. Big exclamation point. Wow, 27 miles per hour. We can't drive that fast out here in front of Middleton. Did you know that? Thumbs up if you were thinking kind of what I was thinking. All right, who had something else that was different than how fast they were flying or swimming? Yeah. Why do they wear tuxedos? Why do they wear tuxedos? Are they really wearing tuxedos? No. no. Why do they say that though? Why do you think they said that? Because they have skin that's black and white. Black and white, like a tuxedo, right? Yep. We have, why do they need to go so fast? Why so fast? Maybe we'll find out. I'm wondering if that's the same thing. So you know what? We can write that down so fast to escape. That's a good question. That's a really good question. Okay. Birds that can't fly. Penguins are birds, but they look very different from the birds in your backyard. And we know they can't fly like the birds that come to your bird feeder. But why are they still called birds? Like all birds, penguins have light, air-filled bones and a beak with no teeth. Penguins have feathers and must comb them with their beaks, and they lay eggs like all birds do. 
Maybe penguins can't fly through the air like a robin or an eagle, but they sure can fly when they're underwater. Last thoughts, let's write them down. Turn and talk to your partner, write them down. Keep talking, keep writing until everybody's had a chance to get their thoughts down. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Pyramids up. Pencils are down. Mouths are closed. All right, ideas. Anything about that last part that you were thinking about? Anything about it? Somebody we haven't heard from yet. Haley? Penguins are different from birds, right? They are birds, but they are different. What else? Yeah, they have the beak and everything, but they can't fly above, but they do the They can fly below, exactly. So they have all the parts of a bird, right? But they just don't fly. Last thing, yeah. Max. Um, birds, they're still birds, but they can't fly. They're still birds, but they can't fly. So thumbs up if you learned something new about penguins. Yeah? I did. Actually, I thought I knew kind of a lot about penguins, but I didn't know that they could swim that fast. Okay, turn and talk. Last thing. What was the coolest thing you learned about all this? All right, five, four, three, two, one. Back to our listening target. Why do I keep track of my thinking? Why am I writing all of this down? Turn and talk. Why are you doing this? How do I keep track? All right, five, four, three, two, one. Pyramids up. Sounds like most of your conversations are over. So pyramids down. Why do we do this? Why do I keep track? Is it just to make sure that I know that you're reading? No, it's more important than that. Why do I do this? So you like have it in mind for a different time if you like, so you know. Yeah, we had a lot of stuff to read, didn't we? Look at how many thoughts we had swimming around. Look at your paper. Look at how written up it is. Do you think you can remember all that stuff by the time you got to the end? No. So our tracks, we call that keeping track, right? It's kind of as it has a double meaning, making tracks of our thinking, just like Moose and bear and dogs and raccoons make tracks in the snow when they're hunting. We're kind of hunting for meaning in the story, right? So we're keeping track, we're making tracks of our thinking by writing them down. All right? Nice job today, guys. We're kind of like searching for things that we don't know. That's right. Just like animals search for their food, we're kind of searching for brain food, aren't we? Yeah. And we've made our tracks with our post-it notes. Nice job today, guys. You have just watched one example of a shared reading lesson using Stephanie Harvey's Comprehension Toolkit, a resource available to all second through fifth grade teachers. Hopefully you noticed the listening target, procedural poster, pair sharing, and debriefing in the teacher's lesson.